Marilyn Monroe is undeniably one of the most beloved sex symbols in American pop culture history. Made famous for her blonde bombshell roles in films such as Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and How to Marry a Millionaire, Monroe's striking beauty and bubbly personality captivated audiences of both men and women alike. Blonde bombshell Marilyn Monroe was actually born Burnett Norma Jean Mortensen on June 1, 1926 in Los Angeles, California. She was the third child of Gladys Baker and the identity of her father is unknown to this day. Shortly after her birth, Monroe was placed with foster parents by her mother, who was mentally and financially unable to care for her. She enjoyed a happy and stable childhood until the age of seven, when Baker took her back in and bought a home in the Hollywood Hills with actors George and Maud Adkinson. A few months later, in early 1934, Baker suffered a mental breakdown and was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. She was subsequently committed to the Metropolitan State Hospital, where she spent the majority of the remainder of her life with little to no contact with Monroe. Grace Goddard, a friend of Baker's, took over her and Monroe's affairs. In the year following her mother's institutionalization, Monroe continued to live with the Atkinsons where she was emotionally and sexually abused. After bouncing from foster home to foster home and a brief stay with the Goddards, Grace eventually placed Monroe in the Los Angeles Orphans Home in Hollywood in 1935, where Monroe became even more withdrawn and unhappy. Staff at the orphanage felt she would be much happier with a family, so Grace became her legal guardian in 1936. When Grace brought her into her home for the second time, Monroe, now 10 years old, was sexually abused by Grace's husband, Erwin Doc Goddard. This prompted her to again bounce from the homes of Grace's friends and relatives until she finally settled in with Grace's aunt, Anna Lower, at 12 years old. She completed junior high school and was enrolled in Van Nuys High School when Lower's health began to deteriorate. In early 1941, she was forced to relocate back into Goddard's home. The following year, Doc Goddard was relocated to West Virginia for work, and child welfare laws prevented Monroe from moving out of state with the family. Faced with the possibility of going back to the orphanage, Monroe married her neighbor, Jim Doherty, in 1942, just before her 16th birthday. Soon after their marriage, Doherty enlisted in the Marines and in 1944 was shipped out to the Pacific. Monroe took a job at Radio Plane Munition Factory in Van Nuys, where she met photographer David Conover, who was sent by the U.S. Army Air Force's first motion picture unit to take pictures of factory workers to boost morale. Despite none of her pictures being used, Monroe quit her job a year later and began modeling for Conover and his friends. Against her deployed husband's wishes, she ventured out on her own and signed a contract with Blue Book Model Agency in 1945 at 19 years old. As a model, she often used the name Jean Norman and began to lighten her brown hair and straighten it to make her more employable. In 1946, she had appeared on over 30 magazine covers and received a contract with an acting agency the same year. It was then that her stage name, Marilyn Monroe, was created. Marilyn was chosen by 20th Century Fox executive Ben Lyon after Broadway star Marilyn Miller. And Monroe chose the last name Monroe after her mother's maiden name. That same year, she filed for divorce from Doughty. In the following years, Monroe worked tirelessly to promote herself and make it as a respected actress. She was known to pay frequent visits to producers and film executive offices. Meanwhile, a few hundred miles north of Los Angeles, in Salinas, California, jeweler Stanley Seedman decided he wanted to promote his store. As a former part-time movie producer, Seedman used the connections from his former profession to book up-and-coming star Doreen Nash for an appearance to model and promote his store, Carlisle's Jewelers. Nash canceled at the last minute, and another up-and-coming star, Marilyn Monroe, got the job instead. Monroe spent a week making appearances around Monterey Bay and checked into the Jeffrey Hotel in Salinas. From behind the counter, she modeled jewelry at Carlisle's, chatted with patrons, and signed autographs. 
She was given the title the Diamond Queen of Salinas by the city, and needless to say, Carlyle's jewelers sold a large amount of diamonds that day. During the same trip, she met with representatives from Calchoke, the California Artichoke Association, in nearby town Casterville, who named her the Artichoke Queen and presented her with a commemorative sash. Monroe was not the first choice for the role, but was available. Photos from this event following her rise to fame were used in many local agricultural advertisements and passed throughout the produce industry. Today, upon entering the National Steinbeck Center in Salinas, you will find a life-size mural of Monroe provocatively holding up artichokes and flashing her million-dollar smile. Monroe eventually landed a contract with Columbia Pictures that same year. To avoid the girl-next-door roles previously offered to her, Monroe raised her hairline and lightened her hair to her signature platinum blonde. Despite many hopeful ventures with Columbia, Monroe didn't find the success she yearned for, and her contract was not renewed in September 1948. Monroe soon became the muse of the vice president of the William Morris agency, Johnny Hyde. Their relationship soon became sexual in nature, and Hyde even proposed to Monroe. During their time together, Hyde also paid for a silicone prosthesis to be implanted in Monroe's jaw, and a speculated rhinoplasty as well. He landed her a small part in the Marx Brothers film, Love Happy. It was around this time that Monroe posed nude for the now infamous shots taken by photographer Tom Kelly. She signed the photos Mona Monroe and received a $50 modeling fee. Kelly later sold the images to Western Lithograph Company, which made calendars featuring the star. In 1950, Hyde was able to negotiate a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox, only to die of a heart attack days later, devastating Monroe. Despite the loss, Monroe continued to propel into superstardom, and by 1952, she was a top-billed actress. Controversy erupted when the nude photos she had taken years prior began to surface on the pages of widely circulated calendars. She openly admitted to having the photos taken in an act of desperation as a broke and struggling actress before her newfound fame and parlayed public sympathy and interest into a role as a sex symbol. Monroe continued to nurture this reputation, including wearing a very revealing dress with a plunging neckline when she acted as Grand Marshal at the Miss America pageant parade in 1952, while telling gossip columnist Earl Wilson that she rarely wore underwear. She went on to embrace her sultry sex pot persona in multiple films like Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and How to Marry a Millionaire. As her acting career continued to skyrocket, her sex symbol status did too. In 1953, Hugh Hefner featured her on the cover of the first ever Playboy magazine using a cropped and reversed photo taken of her wearing her sexy dress as Grand Marshal in 1952. Hefner secured the rights to the photos from her nude session with Kelly in 1949 from a Chicago calendar company for $500. He featured one of the shots as the sweetheart of the month, as it was called at the time, in the center of the magazine. Hefner didn't begin calling the centerfold playmate of the month until over a year later. Monroe's magnetic beauty is often credited to have launched Hefner's career and the success of his magazine after selling almost 50,000 copies of the inaugural issue. In 1954, Monroe married baseball player Joe DiMaggio. It is rumored that during a trip together, they passed through Salinas and stayed at the Santa Lucia Inn, sipped cognac, and ate pecking duck. Despite the public obsession of their romance, it is speculated that the marriage was troubled from the start, and many sources close to the couple confirmed physical abuse. Later that year, in an attempt to generate buzz about her upcoming film, The Seven Year Itch, The film studio staged the filming of a scene on Lexington Avenue in Manhattan, in which Monroe stood over a subway gate with air blowing up her flowing white dress. Although this stunt garnered some of the most infamous photos of Monroe, it ended her marriage to an infuriated DiMaggio. In 1956, after finally closing the book of her turbulent relationship with DiMaggio, Monroe went on to have highly publicized love affairs with Marlon Brando and playwright Arthur Miller who at the time was being investigated for suspected communism, causing the FBI to open a file on Monroe. Around this time, she legally changed her name to Marilyn Monroe and married Miller in a civil ceremony. In the years that followed, Monroe continued her career as a working actress. 
1957, she became pregnant, but was soon determined to have an ectopic pregnancy, which had to be terminated. In 1958, she became pregnant again, but suffered a miscarriage. That same year, she was hospitalized for a barbiturate overdose. Monroe took multiple hiatus in the subsequent years and became increasingly difficult on the set of her movies. The last film she completed was The Misfits, which her husband had written to provide her with a dramatic role. She resented that the role was based on her life, which increased the tension between Miller and Monroe during filming. This was likely a contributing factor of her increasing barbiturate abuse. Her makeup for scenes was often applied while she was sound asleep under the influence of the pills. She did complete filming the movie, which wrapped with her divorce from Miller. Monroe continued to struggle both with her career and mental health, and in 1962, she was found dead in her Brentwood apartment. Her death continues to be highly speculated over, with much debate to this day over whether her death was accidental, a suicide, or murder. Possible accidental overdose was ruled out by investigators due to the extremely high doses of barbiturates found in her system. Due to her history of overdose and no evidence of foul play, her death was classified as a probable suicide. A small private ceremony was planned by DiMaggio at the Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery. Hundreds of fans filled the streets outside the cemetery. Monroe was laid to rest at Crypt Number 24 at the Corridor of Memories. It is rumored that DiMaggio is scheduled to have fresh roses placed at her grave three times a month for the next 20 years. In 1992, Hugh Hefner bought the crypt to the left of Monroe for $75,000. In 2009, he was quoted as saying, I'm a believer in things symbolic. Spending eternity next to Marilyn is too sweet to pass up. After Hefner's 2017 death, he was laid to rest in his previously secured crypt to spend eternity next to his magazine's premier cover girl. The crypt directly above Monroe was formerly occupied by entrepreneur Richard Poncher who purchased the space from Joe DiMaggio after he asked Poncher if he, quote, wanted to buy two crypts, end quote, during a conversation at the Regency Hotel in Los Angeles in 1954 amid divorce proceedings for Monroe. It is said that before his death, he told his wife, if I croak, if you don't put me upside down over Marilyn, I'll haunt you for the rest of my life. Poncher's wishes were honored, and upon his death in 1986, with his widow closely watching, his casket was turned over and slid into place in its crypt directly above Monroe's. In 2009, Mrs. Poncher listed the space on eBay with the headline, Spend Eternity Directly Above Marilyn Monroe, with the intention of using the proceeds to pay off her $1 million mortgage. The auction had a starting price of $500,000 with a winning bid of $4,602,100 from a bidder in Japan who later reneged, citing payment issues. Despite efforts to contact and complete the sale with other bidders, the site has yet to be sold, and Poncher remains in his original crypt. Mrs. Poncher has said that if and when it sells, her husband will be moved into the neighboring crypt intended for her, and she will be cremated when her time comes. Oddly enough, in 2016, it was noticed that a nameplate for Mrs. Poncher had been added to the crypt next to Mr. Poncher, but no date of birth or date of death had been added. There is no record of her death, however, it would appear that she had a change of heart, or, in this case, her gravesite. To present day, Monroe's place in the Westwood Cemetery receives a consistent flow of mourners, young and old alike. Memorials are held yearly at her gravesite on June 1st, her birthday, on August 5th, the date of her death, and are consistently and largely attended by her many fans. Her place among fellow crypts stands out, and it has become permanently stained by the millions of lipstick kiss marks left on its surface. The cemetery is said to keep many of her metal nameplate replacements on hand, and is frequently replaced as the current one is defaced or worn from constant touching. This year will be 56 years since Monroe's tragic and untimely passing but her memory still burns as brightly as her famous megawatt smile.